in terms of modalities that are available in um, evaluating systemic and pulmonary veins, we have obviously cardiac MR and MR angiography, which is going to be the focus um, of our discussion the next eight minutes. CT angiograms, um, uh, echo, and, and, and CAT. Um, in terms of our, our MR protocol and sequences, we've heard a lot about um, black blood and bright blood imaging. Typically, for looking at the pulmonary and systemic veins, an axial stack of black blood, whether you do it in a single or multi-shot T2 technique or with a T1 EPI technique, uh, with high NSAs in patients who uh, you, we perform with uh, free breathing technique. And then the bright blood technique uh, is both the balanced and the unbalanced gradient echo technique, where the spoiled gradient echo, the unbalanced gradient echo seems to be the mainstay with evaluation of the, uh, the anatomy, especially with regards to the, uh, the pulmonary veins. And then clearly when we talk about pulmonary venous connection abnormalities, face contrast imaging plays a huge role because you want to quantify the forward flow across the right and left side of the heart. Um, to comment um, on, on the QPQS ratio, and we had a wonderful discussion of that with Dr. Otto. And then uh, MR angiography with some kind of temporal undersampling technique, whether it's keyhole um, or, 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 uh, or vendor other vendor-specific names, it's a time-resolved uh, technique with temporal case space undersampling, which allows us to have shorter dynamic times and look at the finer structures uh, of the heart, uh, preferably uh, with, with breath hold uh, uh, to, to look at the, uh, the anatomy. So I'm going to go uh, case-based, and um, we'll share some of the cases where, where I found uh, MR uh, angio and MR, MRI to be very helpful in terms of looking at the anatomy and answering the clinical questions. Clearly, total anomalous pulmonary venous connection, partial uh, post-repair, it seems to be a very robust technique. Uh, and, and looking at central venous stenosis and some of the other uncommon ones like an unroofed coronary sinus and photosystemic shunts. My first example is a patient um, who has an anomalous partial venous connection, and you see the right upper pulmonary vein uh, hooking anomalously, draining into the, the SVC. And this is the black blood technique showing you the finding and uh, coronal uh, reconstructions from a 3D MRA uh, demonstrating the uh, draining of the right upper lobe pulmonary vein into the SVC. <clears throat> Typically, these, these uh, abnormalities are associated with an underlying sinus venosus atrial septal defect. doesn't necessarily have to be. And here you can see on the CINE TFE or a, a, a spoil gradient echo clip, bright blood technique, uh, the, uh, the uh, sinus venosus ASD connection and the anomalous drainage of the pulmonary vein. Some of the questions we need to um, answer with this kind of uh, anatomy is apart from depicting the anomalous pulmonary venous connection, um, the enlargement of the right side of the heart, is, um, uh, is the QPQS, and looking at the forward flows across the right and left side of the hearts will give us a value which is very essential uh, to, to depict on the MRI for our clinical colleagues. Um, the radiograph, in a, a very typical radiograph in a patient with an obstructed TAPVR, you see an enlarged heart with uh, interstitial edema on both the sides, you typically present in the first week of life, and uh, a lot of these are associated with underlying heterotaxy. And in this setting of uh, TAPVR, I found the MR angiography to be very, very helpful in showing the anatomy of the anomalous pulmonary venous connection, uh, which is the, the main clinical question in, in, in these uh, infants early on. Uh, as you see in this example, where the anomalous venous connection, the vertical vein, extends below the level of the diaphragm and is opening into the, uh, the portal vein. And some of the other questions we need to answer with this where the MR angiogram is helpful is looking at the hepatic venous anatomy, uh, looking at uh, bilaterality of the SVC, uh, and also the, uh, the pulmonary veins themselves. A third example, uh, we get a lot of referrals looking for uh, uh, the, uh, the total anomalous pulmonary venous return post-repair. Uh, and we typically will get an axial stack of a spoiled gradient echo bright blood. It gives excellent contrast between the blood pool and the walls of the vessel, which allows us to look at the confluence and the opening of the confluence along the, uh, the repair TAPVR posterior uh, aspect of the, of the atrial chamber. Um, and then the MRA also complements the, uh, the other bright blood technique, demonstrating the, uh, the veins to be of normal caliber uh, uh, and uh, the confluence itself. Another thing you can do with this is, is look at phase contrast uh, and, and document the flow across the confluence, um, suggesting uh, uh, that it is open and, and giving a gradient uh, from, the, from the velocity obtained across this, uh, this confluence. Another example where uh, you have a, a left-sided SVC and on this uh, Cine Bright Blood GRE sequence, it demonstrates the requisite findings where the left-sided SVC uh, is opening uh, into the, uh, the left atrium. This is an unroofed coronary sinus, and it demonstrates the anatomy very well. 
Uh, my last example is, is that of uh, systemic venous occlusion. And increasingly, we are doing MR venography is looking for central venous occlusion. Uh, and, and, and a lot of our, our patients, young patients with congenital heart disease, uh, they have a history of multiple catheterizations and central lines placed. Um, and so a, a good roadmap looking at uh, the central veins, especially in terms of stenosis and occlusion, is very helpful for the clinical colleagues when they're placing these uh, lines in these patients. Like in this patient is a two-year-old, which demonstrates non-opacification of the right internal jugular, innominate, and subclavian veins with long-standing history of central line placements. And typically, we can obtain this, uh, these kinds of 3D data sets to easily document the findings. Um, this is a normal MR venography. You can see all the veins opacifying from the um, MR, uh, dynamic MR angiogram done in this patient. And then another one where uh, you can comment not only on the fact that the uh, SVC is uh, completely occluded, but you have this collateral pathway network of veins, which is, uh, uh, which is allowing the, the blood to get back into the, the more peripheral venous system. So in summary, um, MR is, is clearly, you know, it, it functions as a one-stop shop for pulmonary and systemic vein assessment in a myriad of conditions without the use of ionizing radiation. Uh, as, as part of protocol, apart from doing black blood images, the bright blood uh, sequences, I, I find the spoiled GRE to be very helpful, especially getting an axial stack and looking for the pulmonary venous anatomy. And uh, apart from face contrast imaging, the time resolved dynamic MRA allows for good temporal undersampling of case space and uh, looking at the, the finer details with regards to the pulmonary and systemic veins. And 3D post processing uh, is, is key to demonstrating the findings uh, which we saw in some of the examples.